In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these two procedural granite materials in Blender. If you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, you can purchase these procedural materials on my Gumroad store, and you can also get access to it if you join my Patreon. And another great way to help support the channel is by purchasing my Blender procedural material packs. So if you're interested in checking those out, again, the links will be in the description. Or if you'd like to learn how to create more of my procedural materials, then you can also so check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. I'll have the links in the description. And then one more thing before we get started, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab has a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even upload your own 3D models on the platform. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can also preview 3D models on a phone or tablet. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. So let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So I just added some subdivided icospheres and I shaded them smooth. And then I also wanted to preview what the material might look like on something like a kitchen countertop. So to do that, I added these cubes right here. And then I added some bevels on the side of the cube so it has a nice smooth surface. And then I shaded everything smooth. And then I also added a camera and I pointed the camera at these objects. And then also I added this plane light right here. So I just added a plane with a a subsurf modifier so that it is round and then I also gave it an emission material and I turned the strength up. If you're using Blender EV you could also just press shift A and go right here to light and just add an area light. And then also to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections I added in this Machine Shop 2 1K HDR. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. So I just added it in the world as an environment texture and just opened up that HDRI to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial. So to enable the Node Wrangler add-on, just click on edit and go to Blender's user preferences. And then right over there on the add-ons tab, you can just search for the Node Wrangler add-on and just enable that. And I'll show you how to use it in the tutorial. All right, so as I said, we're creating two procedural granite materials and I will have timestamps in the video description if you'd just like to watch one of them. So we're gonna start by creating the colored granite. So this one is gonna be kind of like an orangey reddish peachy color. So let's click on new here. So I can just rename this material to granite colored. And then I'm also going to press Z, move my mouse up, go into the rendered view to preview that. And also I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to drop that material on this object right here. So it'll be the same material. So to start off, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's drop the noise texture down here. And then we did turn on the node wrangler add on. So if you hold down the control and shift key, you can select different nodes while holding down the control and shift key and that is going to preview different nodes. So I'm going to control shift and select the noise texture and we can preview how that's looking. Now I'm also going to select the noise texture and press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't need the mapping node because that is just to change the location, rotation, and scale, but I don't need to do that. So I'm going to select the mapping node and I'll press X to delete it. And then I want to use the object coordinates. So I'm going to plug the object into the vector. So I'm going to turn the scale to 16 so that it's a bit smaller and then I'll turn the detail all the way to the max which is 15 and then I do want to add a little bit more roughness so I'm going to turn the roughness to like a 0.6 so that there's a bit more roughness now that isn't looking anything like granite and so I want to change the colors so to change the colors let's press shift a and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right in there so I'm going to take this black tab and I'm going to drag it out and you can see that as I drag it out it's going to make things more black and I'm going to keep this fully black so I'll just make this a fully black color. Now inside these little black bits, I want there to be a little bit of brown. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then click right there. And that is going to add another tab and I can drag it over. And then for this color right here, I'm going to make it a bit lighter and I'm also going to make it a bit brown. And when I do that, you can start to see there's a little bit of brown right in there. And for this brown color, if you'd like to use the exact same color that I'm using, then you can click right here on the color and click over on the hex value. And then you can type in a hex value of five, eight, three, eight, two, six. That's the exact brown color that I'll be using. Now I'm going to click on this white tab right here and I'm going to drag it out a little bit. And then I'm going to make this kind of a yellowish tannish color, something like that. And to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can type in F two, 
a 9-5-C. Now I want to add a little bit more of a peachy color in this material, so I'm going to hold down the control key and click right here, and that's going to add another tab. And then this one, I'm going to make it a little bit more peachy, and we'll also make it a little bit brighter. And the hex value for this one is F2 9C 6C. All right, so that's looking pretty cool, but usually this type of granite has a little bit more red and it has a little bit more noise. So what I'm gonna do is select this noise texture and then I'm going to press Control Shift D. So normally Shift D will duplicate nodes, but if you press Control Shift D, that will duplicate the node, but it'll keep this data plugged up to it. So the object will still be plugged into the vector. Now let's Control Shift and select this noise texture to preview it and I'm gonna set the scale to 60 so it's much smaller and then I'm also going to turn the detail like down to 5 because I don't want it to be quite that detailed now this isn't very contrasty and I want to make this much more contrasty so to do that I'll press shift a and I'm gonna search for a color ramp and let's just drop this color ramp right here so I'm gonna drag this block tab out to make that a bit more contrasty and I can also drag this out to make that a bit more contrasty so I'll bring this white tab to about here and then the black tab to about there so now we have these two different textures and I want to combine them together. So to do that, I can press Shift A and I can search for a mix RGB. We're gonna drop the mix RGB right here. And then I wanna take this top color ramp and I'm gonna put that into the factor. And then I'll take this bottom color ramp and I'm gonna put that into color one. Now you can see that it's making everything lighter. And so I wanna click right here and I wanna change this to darken because I want things to be darker. So now on color two, we can change this. So I'm gonna make this a red color. And as I start to make it a kind of a darkish reddish color, you can see we're starting to see all of that detail come in. And for this red color, the hex value that I'm using is a hex value of 6F2229. So now you can see there's much more detail in there and that is looking quite nice. Now after looking at reference images, it seems like usually this type of granite also has some little white specks. So what I'm gonna do is take this noise texture, I'll press Shift D to duplicate it. We're gonna duplicate it one more time and then I'll plug the object into the vector and then I can hold down the Control and Shift key and select it to preview it. Now for this one, I'm gonna change the scale to 25 so that it's a bit bigger, and then I will turn the detail all the way to 15 so it's very detailed. And then also I do wanna give this a little bit more roughness. So for this top one, I'm gonna give it a roughness value of a 0.65 so it has just a little bit more roughness. Now again, we wanna make this more contrasty because I want it to be very clear where those white specks are. So I'm gonna take this color ramp and I'm gonna just select it and press Shift D to duplicate it. And we're just gonna drop it right in here so the noise texture will go into the factor. So I can now drag these together and we can make this much more contrasty. So that's pretty good. So you can now see that those white spots are just here and there, but most of it is black. So I now want to combine this one with the final material. So I'm going to click on this mix RGB and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and let's drop it right here. So I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put the color into the factor and then let's also control shift and click on this to preview it. And then I want to take this darken right here and I want to put that into color one. Now I don't want this to be set to darken because I want it to be bright. So I'm going to click on this darken and instead I'm going to change it to lighten. So I can now change this color two to fully white. So let's just make it all the way to white. Let's click over on the RGB for red, green, and blue. And we can just drag these all up to one so it's fully bright. And then I find that it works a little bit better if it's just slightly darker. You can see as it gets darker, it starts to get more invisible. So I'm gonna make it a tiny bit darker and that way you'll just be able to see a tiny bit through those white areas. All right, so that is it for the color. So I can take the color and I can put the color into the base color on the principled and then just hold down the control and shift key and select the principled BSDF. So that's looking pretty good, but I do want to make this very shiny because this is a nice smooth granite material. So it does need to be nice and shiny. So on the roughness here, I'm just going to change this to a 0.2 so it's much more shiny. And there we go. So there is the first procedural granite. Now there is just one more thing you could do. This granite material is a little bit saturated and so I do find that it can look nice if it's a little bit less saturated. So if you'd like to make this just a little bit less saturated, you can press Shift A and you can search for the hue saturation node. I'm just gonna drop the hue saturation value node right in here between the lighten and the principled. So now if you turn the saturation down, it's going to make it less saturated and so it'll be more black and white. So this is personal preference. Um, you could do it if you want to. I find that it looks a little bit more realistic if I just turn the saturation to a 0.9 five that way it's just slightly less saturated um, it is subtle but I do think it looks kind of nice so you could do that if you wanted to so make sure you save your project and there is the first granite material all right so now we are going to be creating the second granite material so this one is going to be a white granite 
So I'm going to select these objects right here. I'll click on new and I can just call this granite white. So I'm going to call this one granite white. And then also I can click right here and I can drag this over and drop it on this object as well so that it has the granite white material. So for this material, again, I'm going to press shift A and we're going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture here and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And then I also want to press control T with the noise texture selected. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping, but we don't really need the mapping. So I'm going to press X to delete it and let's just plug the object up to the vector so that it's using the object coordinates. Now for the scale here, I want to set this to like a 35 so that it's much smaller. And then let's also turn the detail all the way to the max, which is 15. And then I do want it to be a bit more rough. So I'm going to turn the roughness value to a 0.7. So it's just a little bit more rough. Now we need to make this more contrasty because it's not very contrasty. So again, let's press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and let's just drop the color ramp node right in here. So the factor can go through the factor and then you can just control shift and select the color ramp. So now I can just start to drag these values out and that'll make it more contrasty. So I'm going to bring them out to about there and you can see now that is much more contrasty and that is looking much nicer. Now we could just take this color and plug it into the base color and control shift and click on this, but that doesn't look too much like granite. It's a bit simple and I do want to add a bit more detail and I also want to add some more swirly bits in the granite. So let's add some more detail to this. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture and let's drop the Voronoi right here. And then again, I want to plug the object up to the vector so that we're using the object coordinates and then I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. And then I'm going to click on this F1 and I'm going to instead change it to distance to edge. So we now have this really cool texture. Now I want to make this much more sharp. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and we're just going to drop the color ramp node right in here. So I can now start to drag this white tab out and that is going to make it much more contrasty because we are crushing those values and so it's going to be much more white. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Voronoi texture to distort another noise texture. So I'm going to select this noise texture and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and drop it right down here. And then let's control shift and click on it to preview it. Now for the scale here, I'm going to just change this to like a 21 and then I don't want there to be too much roughness. So I'm going to turn the roughness back to the default, which is 0.5. So I can now use this texture here to distort the noise texture. So to do that, I'm going to take the color right here and I'm going to put the color into the distortion. And so that is going to distort it. And you can now see it. There's all these swirly bits. And then also I do want to plug the object into the vector, the noise texture. So it's using the object coordinates. And there we go. So you can see now it has a bunch of swirls. Now I do just want to make it a little bit more strong. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a math node and let's drop the math node right here. So the color is going to go into the first value and then that value will go into the distortion. Now on this add here, I'm going to click on this and right up here under functions, I'm going to change it instead to a multiply. And then we can start to turn up this value and you can see that as I turn up this value, it's going to make it much more strong. Now I don't want it to be too strong. So on the value here, I'm just going to change this to a 1.5 and now you can see that is definitely more strong, but it's not too strong. So we now have all these little nice swirly bits there in the texture. Now this isn't very black and white. It's kind of just gray. So I'm going to take this color ramp here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. We're going to drop it right here. And then let me just kind of move these out of the way move that over, move that over as well. So I'm just going to control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. Now that's a bit too contrasty. So I'm going to drag this out a bit and then I will also drag the white tab over a bit. And that way you can see that it's much more white. And so we're now just able to see some of those swirly bits. So if you control shift and select this, you can see we have that nice texture and then you can control shift and select this. So I want to join these both together. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB so we can mix the red, green, and blue together. So we're going to mix these both together. So I want to take this first one, this top one up here, and I'm going to put that into the factor. And then I'm going to take this color ramp and I'm going to put that right here into color one and then just control shift and select the mix to preview it. Now, because these are black values, I want to click on the mix here and I want to change this to darken. That way it's going to add the dark values. So now right here on color two, I can just make this fully black. And now you can see that it's taking the dark values of both of these and it's 
it's mixing them together. So we now have a really nice texture there. It has a lot of detail and some noise, but then it also has some swirly bits here and there. So I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put that into the base color and then I can control shift and select the principle to preview it. Now again, this isn't very shiny and because this is a smooth granite, I do want this to be nice and shiny. So on the roughness, let's just change this to a 0.2 so it's more shiny. And there we have it. So there are the procedural granite materials. And I just gave this a render and here is the final result. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And again, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can purchase these procedural materials on my Gumroad store and you also get access to them if you join my Patreon. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs. And to watch more procedural material tutorials, you can check out the procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching.